Chapter 1 The Globe The Globe and I The earth is so vast that we cannot see the whole of it at a glance. So, we make a model of the earth. This model is the globe. It helps us to study the earth as a whole as well as its important features like shape, size, direction, land area and water bodies. Also, a globe is very pretty to look at. So we can see people using it as a decorative piece in their homes and offices. Look at the picture of the earth and observe. It is spherical like a ball. You can see only one half of it. You cannot see the other half. Now look at the globe in your class and observe. It is also spherical. It is set on a stand at a slight angle. You can see only one half of it. You cannot see the other half. If you want to see the other half, you have to rotate it. The earth rotates on its axis, so a globe is set on a stand such that it can be rotated. Main Features of the Earth The earth's surface is covered with land or water areas. The large land areas are called continents. They are seven in number, Asia, Africa, North America, South America, Europe, Australia, and Antarctica. The large water areas are called oceans. They are five in number. Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Indian Ocean, Arctic Ocean, and Southern Ocean. Know it. The earth rotates on a slight angle, so a globe too is set on a slight angle. Axis North Pole and South Pole. Just rotate the globe. You can see that it rotates on two points on which it is set on the stand. Of these two points, one is at the top and the other at the bottom. The top point is called the North Pole and the bottom point is called the South Pole. If you join these two poles with an imaginary line through the globe, this line will be called its axis. It is along this axis that the globe rotates. So is the case with the earth. Studying the earth. The earth is very large. We cannot study it altogether. So we divide it into some parts. For this, we draw some imaginary lines on the globe. These lines are not there on the earth. We draw these lines in horizontal and vertical directions. The horizontal lines are called latitudes and the vertical lines are called longitudes. Know it. Ptolemy was a Greek astronomer. He is believed to have invented the system of latitudes and longitudes. Latitudes. Latitudes are horizontal lines. The longest latitude is called the equator. It is drawn midway between the North Pole and the South Pole. Thus, this line divides the Earth into two parts. The part above the equator is the northern part and is called northern hemisphere. And the part below the equator is the southern part and is called southern hemisphere. Some more latitudes are drawn parallel to the equator as they are parallel to each other. They never meet as they have equal distance everywhere. They are also called parallels of latitude. A total of 90 latitudes are drawn in each hemisphere. Thus, there are 90 latitudes in the northern hemisphere and 90 latitudes in the southern hemisphere. The latitudes in the northern hemisphere are called north latitudes and those in the southern hemisphere are called south latitudes. All latitudes are marked in degrees. The equator is marked zero degree. The smallest latitudes are North Pole and South Pole and both of them are marked 90 degrees. Know it. If you cut the globe into two equal parts, each part will be called a hemisphere. The latitudes in the northern hemisphere are labeled N and those in the southern hemisphere are labeled S. For example, 
latitude at 45 degrees in the northern hemisphere is written as 45 degree north and 45 degrees in the southern hemisphere is written as 45 degrees south. Similarly, the North Pole is marked 90 degree north while the South Pole is marked 90 degrees south. The latitudes which are near the equator are called low latitudes and those near the poles are called high altitudes. Know it. The equator is the longest latitude and other latitudes decrease in length towards the poles. The latitudes at the poles are as small as a point. Important latitudes. The equator is the most important latitude and is marked zero degrees. It divides the globe into two equal halves. Other important latitudes are the following. Tropics. The latitudes drawn at 23 and a half degrees north are called tropics. They are two in number, one in the northern hemisphere and the other in the southern hemisphere. The Tropic of Cancer lies at 23 and a half degree north. The Tropic of Capricorn lies at 23 and a half degree south. Circles. The latitudes at 66 and a half degree north are called circles. They are two in number, one in the northern hemisphere and the other in the southern hemisphere. The Arctic Circle lies at 66 and a half degree north. The Antarctic Circle lies at 66 and a half degrees south. Poles. We have told you about the two poles. The North Pole lies at 90 degree north and the South Pole lies at 90 degrees south. They are the smallest latitudes. Latitudes and heat zones. You know that the sun is the source of heat and light on the earth. In a similar manner, the sunlight falls direct in the middle of the earth and is slanting on the sides. That is, the sun shines direct over the areas around the equator. So, it is very hot in the middle and due to slanting sunlight on the sides, it is very cold near the poles. On this basis, we can divide the earth into three heat zones. 1. Very hot zone the area around the equator within the two tropics, Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn, receives direct sunlight. So, it is the hottest area on the earth. 2. Very cold zone. The areas around the two poles within circles receive very slanting sunlight. So, these are the coldest areas. In other words, the coldest areas on the Earth are located between the North Pole and the Arctic Circle in the Northern Hemisphere and between the South Pole and the Antarctic Circle in the Southern Hemisphere. 3. Moderate Zone Some areas receive moderate sunlight. They are neither too hot nor too cold. These areas are two, one between the Tropic of Cancer and the Arctic Circle in the Northern Hemisphere and the other between the Tropic of Capricorn and the Antarctic Circle in the Southern Hemisphere.